Hi, Toby Hodges here at the Dusseldorf Boat Show for Yachting World, and this is the Neo 570. So the Neo 570C, this is the first one designed by Paolo there and Sean Karkeek. Um, and it's a weapon, it's a cruiser racer, but just while we're here looking at this heavily chamfered camber bow, where that chine starts from low and runs up in this reverse sheer shape, it's super cool and contemporary. It looks wickedly fast, and we can presume it will be on the water. They've only had it in light winds so far. But when you look at that shape, and if you come back here and look underneath, you can see very flat, planing aft sections there. So it's designed to be basically the same sort of speed as a TP-52. But that, you know, it's a few feet longer and you've got the space to add some cruising, um, cruising amen amenities as well. So straight away here, you see it's got a, hopefully you can, it's quite dark, but that is a tender garage there. So swim platform here and then space in there for a three and a half meter dinghy with a 15 horsepower engine. Uh, and then you'll see that's on the water type bulkhead. You've got some of the, uh, the electrics and hydraulics in there and if you can see the pipes as well that's for the water ballast system and if you built a racer cruiser it would be a stripped you know tp52 two would be stripped out uh, and raced by typically 15 so if you want to be able to cruise it as well well let's just say fast sail it um, then you want to be able to do it with less people and water ballast will help that so this has seven seven to eight hundred litres of water ballast. So you pump that on each side, you need less people um, to sail the boat fast and flat. Starting from the aft here, you can appreciate this is a very beamy boat indeed. Oh, 5.3 metres, 17 and a half foot, I think, that beam. And yeah, it just looks like raw powder, doesn't it? Very flat deck and quite well organized, I think. It's unusual, obviously, to have the wheels so far forward. Uh, and what that means is your, your mainsail trimmer really is gonna be aft here. But so if this is where the helmsman's gonna be, sat here, the canting, or, st or stood with the, the canting foot plate, then you've got this slot here for the mainsail trimmer to sit. This is obviously when racing. Um, with foot controls to control the uh, high powered air winches each side. So this is the type of winch, an Air 250 Harken here that you would see on a TP52. And what they did was work with, uh, Neo worked with Harken to put a 24 volt motor in that. So you get a high speed um, mainsail winch. Let's see if it's on. No, turn them off, but they are, I imagine the fastest <laughs> mainsail winches you're gonna see with those electric ones anyway. All this deck um, is super grippy sort of thing you see on, on Volvo um, boats, TPs, it's sea deck foam uh, decking, really nice. And that mixture of that and the inbuilt non-slip, which is Kiwi grip as well. Yeah, lightweight and functional. Neo yachts in Barry make pretty much most things themselves. Um, including the sails because the bank's sails and um, yeah so these things like these stanchions support customized there the foot supports they're all made in house so there you got the deflectors uh, and controls for the running backstay the winches for them 
Each side you've got a quarter locker there uh, for life rafts. And there's your shore power in. Nice long mainsail traveller track with an Antal flat winder there to control that electrically as well. And then moving forward, you see a little bit more of the, the cruising element to have a couple of cockpit tables, obviously removable to save weight when you are racing, but those will drop down. You can have them fixed. You can have them, you don't have to have them. Um, if you're spending 2 million euros on a boat, you can obviously choose how you want to kit it out. And then you have uh, uh, here, these winches as well. A lot of things designed to, to, to lead to multiple winches. So you can run your halyards uh, around these winches, very high speed, so you can pull a sail up and in a matter of seconds, seven seconds, I think, uh, on, a, on a high speed electric winch. Uh, and then, yeah, your bank of clutches on the normal companionway winches there. Very flat deck going forward with a well for a spray hood. And there, that's a bit more TP52 style again to have uh, the the jib tracks as well and full hydraulics on those to control the in and out leads for the jib sheets so you get the, the angle you want and look how closely in hauled that can be as well very tight pointing angles very flat deck going forward under this cover here is the trunk the keel trunk yeah that removes okay so there you'll see right down through the bottom of the boat. And that is uh, the keel, I think, goes from four and a half meters up to 2.8, I believe. Uh, and it's a custom keel. So it was designed by Car Keek. Um, it has Caraboni hydraulics uh, and it's been custom made for this boat. Uh, you can see, if I should be able to see on the stand here. There it is, there's the keel itself, but look how low profile it is, in particularly at the top, so the actual keel head, very, very narrow indeed. High, high performance. Under here, if it's open, don't know if it is, but it's um, a crew cabin set up. Yeah, so in again, in cruising mode, you've got a a cot set up, a, a bunk set up in there, it steps down in carbon. And then further forward, anchor locker. So there's a bit more of your racer cruiser mix. Look. Wind normal, anchor windless. Uh, you see how the red chain runs through the, um, that hole there, and then you've got a, a roller within that enormous bowsprit. Wouldn't want to go all the way forward there to the tack point. Look how long it is. Uh, and then you've got a a hydraulic Cunningham there for the headstay with twin pistons installed under that. Yeah, very much the sort of detail you'd see on a high-end race boat. Quite a machine, but wait till you see what's below decks. Weren't ready for that. Very cool, very minimalist, contemporary, cruiser, racer, weekender type setup, really. And this can be tailored, obviously, to suit uh, what each customer wants. It's quite a customized boat, as I said. It could be a 60 footer, which allows a different layout. Um, it could be a twin rudder boat, this one's a single, and you can have a proper forward cabin. You could just have this area as it is, it could be a saloon area. Uh, this table as it is drops down to fill in to make a massive great sort of suite in here if you wanted to. Apologies for the light flickering. Um, so yeah, there's a, there you go, switch there. And that's now dropping down to fill in that area there. Galley is built around this keel trunk area. So you've got a microwave below that uh, and a gimbling induction hob on the top. 
quite slick. Uh, stowage this side on the galley. Everything, well that's not stowage. A little aircon machine in there as well. Um, drawers and the stowage below it. It's all in pre-preg core shell, this one. Uh, so super, super lightweight. It, as standard, they'll probably make the boat in infusion carbon, carbon epoxy. But yeah, this one weighs, that's big stowage rail uh, area in there with a rail above it. I love how the structure of the boat is, is just left exposed. See how, and imagine how stiff and strong it is. There's the chain plates there, and big ring bulkheads. And it's the same again on the side, yeah, very much a symmetrical layout. So more stowage behind there, big sink in there, outlets for your aircon, uh, around this keel trunk again. Navigator space um, or an office space. Yeah, there is a stool there, but this screen just cants over each side and you can sit here, keyboard, feet up, brace yourself in there. And equally this, that's the, you know, sofa style and that is very comfortable and that, that can do the same as this side. So it becomes uh, a bunk berth each side, well, two bunk berths and you can count the bottom one as well. I just pull on here, that'll lift up stowage below it but obviously you can get a nice wedged in angle depending on which tack you're in. Super, super lightweight doors there. Plenty of outboard stowage in the raised bit. And then moving aft, you have a good size heads and shower stroke wet hanging locker area each side. And then a proper double cabin. Yeah, so same each side, but when I say a proper double cabin, you know, that's got a good stowage in it. Bunk outboard there, again, you can split these berths. Um, that lifts up there, or you, you put a lee cloth in between them. So, you know, as I say, it's designed really optimally for five to be sailing, five to be racing, and five to be off watch, you know, asleep or whatever. Uh, and the water ballast helping make up for that extra five uh, in terms of crew weight on the rail. And then between these cabins here, you've got a mechanical area for the batteries. That is the trunk for the single rudder when it's in. And yeah, plenty of mechanical space back there as well. It's got a water, water maker back there, look, on the port side. Plenty of room to access them as well and then conventional engine bay in there for the 75 horsepower engine, diesel engine, I believe. And a power pack above it. Underneath the central saloon sole here is the hydraulics. Yeah. So there's all your high, high, carabone hydraulics for the uh, lifting keel mounted under there. And then the same in your heads, shower and hanging wet locker area there. Everything's so light, just painted carbon. Imagine it'd be quite loud. So the lightweight displacement of the boat is 11.9 tons with around half of that ballast in that T-keel. I was asking Paolo about the spinnaker retrieval at the moment, they tend to just suck it down through this um, companionway hatch. It obviously can come down through the forward one uh, and they will look at once they start racing it. Um, uh, putting a full spinnaker retrieval system down through here so, it get, so we have a pulley at the aft end, looks like you've got a good 12 meters at least to pull that spinnaker through the interior and plenty of space to do so. Designed and built to compete and win in Mediterranean style offshore races. This is yeah, something different. This one in carbon and core cell, very lightweight. You could strip another 400 kilos or so out with just these interior furnishings, etc. And yeah, this one I think costs around the 2 million euro mark. 
but pretty cool to have a boat that, that has an interior that can be cruised in to line up against some, some of the racing weapons like TP-52s. We'll see how it does in this 23 season. Hope you enjoyed the quick tour here at Dusseldorf Show. Until next time. Thank you.